Joshua Westbury and Stephen Rung explore the concept of fronting in discourse, emphasizing that not all information presented in a conversation or text is of equal importance. Writers must decide what elements to accentuate or downplay. They illustrate this through the example sentences, I went to the store yesterday and yesterday I went to the store, affirming that both sentences convey the same basic message but with subtle differences in focus. Fronting is when an element, such as a word or phrase, is moved to the beginning of a sentence. In this case, the adverb yesterday is fronted in sentence. B. The authors clarify that fronting serves to draw extra attention to the fronted element, but this is distinct from simply asserting it. The role of fronting changes according to context, and its effects are seen differently in various languages. While both sentences A and B relay the same propositional content, the choice of structure can change the reader or listener's attention to specific components of that content. The act of fronting is, therefore, a strategic decision that writers or speakers make to guide the audience's attention in a particular direction, subtly influencing how the information is processed and understood. Also, the authors delve into the role of sentence structure in highlighting information. They indicate that the most important information in a sentence is not necessarily at the forefront. Rather, it's determined by the context. For instance, if you ask, when did you go to the store? The key information, yesterday, could be either fronted for extra emphasis or left in its standard position. The authors discuss the concept of the default option in a sentence structure, which serves as the basic framework against which other options are compared. While the default may not be the most common, it is the option used when nothing special needs to be communicated. Any deviation from this default option signals some special intent or meaning. In English, this emphasis is often indicated through intonation or stress. The stress can be applied whether the word or phrase is in its default position or has been specially positioned for emphasis. Special positioning gives the word extra prominence, what the authors describe as zing. This is especially useful for correcting a wrong assumption or focusing attention on a specific detail. The authors extend this analysis to Greek and Hebrew, stating that in these languages, the zing is achieved grammatically by fronting the most important part of the clause. Overall, the authors argue for understanding emphasis in a sentence not just as a factor of word placement, but as a nuanced interaction between grammatical rules, the default sentence structure, and the specific needs of the communication. Moreover, the concept of fronting a clause element in sentence structure serves two primary functions, each dependent on the status of the information being fronted. The first function is to add emphasis to newly asserted or the most important information in the sentence. The second function serves to draw attention to known or inferable information from the preceding context, though without necessarily maintaining it as the most important information. The context in which a sentence appears greatly influences the function of fronting. For instance, in response to the question, what have you been doing, fronting the word yesterday, changes the emphasis of the sentence towards the time frame rather than the activity performed. On the other hand, if the question is, what did you do? And the answer is, I went to the beach today. Yesterday, I went to the store. Fronting yesterday points out the change in time between the two activities, but doesn't make it the focal point of the sentence. In this scenario, the actions performed, going to the beach or going to the store, remain the most important information. Thus, the discourse function of a fronted element changes based on its context. When the fronted element contains the most vital information in a clause, it receives added emphasis. If a less critical element is fronted, its role is to establish a new frame of reference for the information that follows, without necessarily being the central focus of the statement. Furthermore, in the study of Hebrew grammar, traditional grammarians have often associated the fronting of an element in a sentence with emphasis. However, they also noted instances where fronting did not result in emphasis, but rather created contrast. Westbury and Rung offer a refined framework to understand this phenomenon better. They acknowledge that while fronting does attract additional attention to the fronted element, it can serve different purposes depending on what is being fronted. When the most important element of a clause is fronted, it indeed creates emphasis. On the other hand, fronting less important elements results in contrast, which sets a new frame of reference for the elements that follow. Traditional grammarians had intuitively recognized these patterns but lacked a comprehensive descriptive framework to articulate their insights. Essentially, they could identify what was happening but couldn't empirically explain why it was happening. 
Advances in the understanding of linguistic conventions over the last 40 years have provided the tools to differentiate between emphasis and frames of reference more clearly. This not only adds precision to the analysis of fronted elements in Hebrew, but also enhances the exegetical understanding of texts by distinguishing between what was traditionally labeled as emphasis and contrast. Last but not least, Westbury and Runga discussed the concept of fronting in sentence construction, particularly in the context of the Hebrew Bible. Fronting refers to the deliberate reordering of sentence elements to draw attention to a specific part of the clause. According to the authors, emphasis is given to the element that is fronted, with the purpose being to attract extra attention to it. Their definition of emphasis is placing what is relatively most important in a special position to attract extra attention to it. They contend that fronting less crucial elements can also establish a new frame of reference for the subsequent clause. While the same message could be conveyed through standard word order, choosing to front an element signifies an intentional choice to reiterate it, and therefore adds meaning to the sentence. The authors caution that these are not hard and fast rules, but rather guidelines for understanding the choices writers make. Importantly, they repeat the role of context in interpreting these choices. Contextual changes can lead to varying interpretations, thereby showing the limitations of relying solely on rule-based explanations for understanding textual emphasis and meaning. They advocate for an understanding of fronting that goes beyond mere rules, considering the implications of the writer's choices based on available options and contextual factors. In conclusion, Westbury and Rung investigate the concept of fronting in discourse, which involves the strategic placement of words or elements at the beginning of a sentence to guide audience attention. The authors use sentences like, I went to the store yesterday, and yesterday I went to the store, to illustrate that both can convey the same message but with subtle differences in focus. They differentiate fronting from simple emphasis, underlining that the purpose and impact of fronting are context-dependent. Further, they introduce the notion of a default option in sentence structure, which serves as a standard framework. Deviations from this default are meaningful and often underscore a particular word or phrase, sometimes imbuing it with what the authors call zing. In English, this can be accomplished through stress or intonation, while in languages like Greek and Hebrew, it's often done grammatically. Besides, the function of fronting changes according to the context and the information being accentuated. It can serve to affirm new or critical information, or draw attention to known or inferable context without necessarily making it the focus. Additionally, the authors delve into the study of Hebrew grammar to refine traditional interpretations of fronting, distinguishing between emphasis and establishing new frames of reference. Lastly, Westbury and Runga extend their analysis to the context of the Hebrew Bible, asserting that fronting serves to highlight specific elements intentionally. They debate that the implications of fronting can't be understood through rule-based explanations alone. Contextual factors play a crucial role. Overall, the authors offer a nuanced understanding of how the act of fronting interacts with grammatical rules, default structures, and specific communication needs to influence how information is processed and understood.